Hey guys, welcome to a new series, 10 minute tutorials. So gotta be a bit fast to make it. So let's drag in a fusion composition like so and adjust the time a bit. Yeah, and let's head over to the fusion tab and let's hit control spacebar and get a text 3D node in. And let's display that in viewport one and let's switch the lighting on like so. Right, and then we'll type in, well, let's first change the font to Roboto, one of my favorite fonts, and let's type in a some text, like so. Uh, let's reduce it in size a bit to something like 0 0.25, a quarter, and let's then head over to the extrusion bit and give it a bit of depth. And also, uh, once we've done that, let's give it some bevel uh, depth and width as well. Okay, now it looks like that, but we need to adjust the spacing a bit or the tracking even and that looks a lot better at least in my view so uh, let's now add a merge 3d node and once we've added that let's add in a camera a 3d camera and pipe it into the merge 3d like so and let's display that in viewport number two and let's there switch on the lighting as well okay so we've got it there and let's switch to the camera view and now you can't see anything because we need to pull back the camera a bit, like so. And now we're going to really uh, change the projection type to orthographic. Basically that gets rid, rid of all the depth. And uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, it's, it's a really stylistic reason. And let's add a render 3D. Let's switch over to OpenGL and let's get rid of the transparency there. I like to see a uh, black background. And let's also switch on the lighting, but as you would expect, it's all black because there are no lights. So let's add a couple of lights. Let's add a point light here, drag it up there and pipe it into the merge. And then let's reposition the light a bit. Let's put it to the left, a bit to the front. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And yeah, let's add in another one. Like so and pipe it in. There we go, and let's reposition that one as well. A bit to the right and a bit further, and let's move it forward a bit as well. And that looks pretty good. So that's the text done for now. So that's all really fairly simple, but let's change one thing. Let's uh, change the specular intensity a bit as well. Uh, that may not seem obvious, the reason here, but later on it is important. If you don't do that, uh, it, it, it will y yield a bit of a different result. So. Let's now add a filter after the renderer and let's set it to Sobo or Sobel, I don't know. And that basically gives you the outline. And after the filter, we'll add a soft glow, like so, and display that in the viewport and adjust the gain and glow a bit until, well, to your liking. And finally, let's add a color corrector. And let's give it a bit of a blue tinge, like, like, uh, like that, yeah, that looks good. And let's pipe it into the media out. And that's it for the stylistic part of it. That's very simple. And of course, you can change it to the way you like it. But let's work on the animation a bit. Before we do that, let's go to the top view here and let's investigate this a bit because we want to really rotate these, rotate these characters. But you need to be careful a bit because when you would rotate it around your Y axis, as you can see here, at first sight, it may look okay, but when you look a bit closer, you can see that the pivot point is really at the back of the character or the top, whatever way you look at it, right? And that's because there's some extrusion applied to it. So how do we fix that? Right, you can see it here again. So basically, we will need to look at the size of the text and the extrusion depth and take that into account when we would create an expression. So let's have a look there. So at the size of 0 0.25, when you take into that into account and the extrusion depth. Now we can pick whip these things into the expression, but these are fairly simple ones. So let's type it in there straight away. So we'll type in the expression size with a capital S times extrusion depth, capital E, capital D. And then let's have a look again. And now you can see that the pivot change uh, point has changed, but it's too far because we need to divide it by two. And now you can see that the pivot point is right in the middle. Now let's move on to the animation. Let's add a follower to the styled text, like so. And then head over to the modifier tab and let's work on the timing first. Let's have a three 
or two or three frame delay uh, for between each character, right? Of course, that you can vary that the way, uh, any way you want. And here we've got the pivot, right? We spoke about, and let's animate the Y rotation. Let's set a keyframe at frame zero, and then let's go to frame 30 or so, I think. Yeah, let's do frame 30, and let's do full rotation. Let's set it at 360, and there we go. And here you can already see if you play it now, now you see the follower in action, right? There's a delay between each character. So that's looking good. But now we want to move on to something like frame 100 or so, uh, because we want it to be stationary for a bit and set it keyframe again, again at 360. And then it needs to go back to zero at 130, like so. And now we've got basically the full animation as far as the rotation goes, it rotates back. Okay, but let's smooth it out a bit. Let's go to the spline editor and let's get everything into view here. Let's select the first two points and let's hit the curve there. And the same for the second two points. There we go. So now we've got a sort of an ease in, ease out type of action going and it makes it all a lot smoother. So the next thing we need to do basically is work on the color. So let's go into the uh, color tab. I oh, don't know what the tab is actually called. And let's set the color at first to a transparent black. So let's set a keyframe to animate the color group. And let's change the color there and hit the black. But then let's not forget to also reduce the alpha to zero. Okay, so then it's basically fully transparent at the start of the animation. Then let's again go to frame 30 and let's then basically change that to white. Like so. And also let's not forget to change the alpha back to one as well. Otherwise we won't see a thing. And there you go, you see it appear. So let's then move to frame 100, set another keyframe on the color group. Right, and it includes the alpha. <clears throat> and then let's go to frame 130 and set everything again to black transparent. There we go. And that's basically everything there is to it, almost, in terms of the animation. So let's play that. There you go, it's coming in. And it's stationary for a bit, and then it's disappearing again whilst it's rotating. Now, it does look a bit different though to the example. And there's one simple change we have to make to make it look awesome. At least that's what I think, right? We need to basically change the extrusion and then something interesting is going to happen. So let's change the extrusion to one. I know you can see what's happening there in the screen. And as it is one, and because the camera is orthographic, you get this really nice effect because it gets rid, rid of the depth. And you see this really cool, so I don't know how to describe it, but I thought it looked really, really, really interesting. So, and then we're nearly there. We just need to do a few more things, right? Because this is all great. Um, let's have a look. Now we want to do one more thing and it's to introduce a bit of motion blur and we're going to use the vector motion blur because I like the look of that. So what we need to do is select the vector in the output channel, right? That it creates a vector based or set of vectors based on the motion. And then we can add the vector motion blur. And once we add that, uh, and maybe I will need to zoom in a bit, you can see there's a bit of motion blur there. You can change it to another setting. So, oh, sorry something like two, and you can see it is a bit more, but one should be sufficient for our purposes. But again, for your stylistic choice, it may be a bit different. And then basically we're there, we're already done, and I think we're, yeah, we're within the 10 minutes. So let's render this out and let's hit play. There we go, comes in, comes out, and we're done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this new format, 10-minute tutorials. See you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.